Right, so one more time with practicing setting up our documents, I will go to File, New Document. I'm gonna keep the previous settings again, just another 11 by 17, margins are zero, so I'm gonna start with another blank sheet of paper. Command D for a document, and in Chapter 4, Folder 16, I'm gonna drop in this photo from the fair as well. Okay, we'll make it a decent size. I'll start right here, knowing that pictures come in from their upper left corner, so I can click and drag down to the right. And the pictures will always come in at their proportions. I can't start here and drag way over there. See, it's still gonna come down in this proportion. So always keep that in mind. All right, there's my photo. And I'm gonna move that around so I get my two smart guides. This photo is dead center on the page. What I wanna do is rotate the photo. So there are multiple ways to do that, okay? First, you select it with your black arrow, and the first way is you have a rotation field right here. If you hover over that, it says rotation angle. So if I hit the up arrow and I let go, I can rotate that. If I hit or click, 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 and kind of see it live as I'm doing it, if you want to tilt something on its side, you've got these presets. Rotate at 90 degrees, 90 degrees. This is uh, counterclockwise, 90 and 90. Or if you want to just do it manually, you can hover near a corner, not on the corner, but just outside, you'll get a rotation arrow and you can click and drag. Now again, what I always recommend is you press and hold for a second because if I don't I'm not going to see what happens until I let go okay and I don't want that so I press and hold now I get a live preview okay and if you don't like that you don't like clicking these you don't like using this you also have halfway down on the right on your toolbox if you press and hold you've got a rotate tool, okay, which is kind of redundant. It starts from the center because my reference point is on the center. But the reason why I would want to use the rotation tool is I could click this upper left. And now when I swing it, I swing it out from that upper left corner. So the rotation tool definitely has its uses if you want to designate a reference point to start your rotation. So if I took my black arrow, and let's set my angle right here to zero again, and return, I could put this photo right up near that corner, click once on my rotate tool, designate the upper left corner, and then just kind of tilt it up from there. Okay, or have it swing right outside the page. So again, if it swung outside the page and I hit W, that's what I would get if I were to print. Anything that goes beyond the edge of the page, you're not gonna see. I'll hit W again. But it's kind of repetitive. You know, there's if you're on free transform, you've got your nodes, you still rotate it as well. But notice, even though my reference point is on the upper left, when I'm on the free transform, it'll rotate from the center of the photo, okay? So when reference points are something that you need, that's when you're gonna use your rotate tool. If you double click on it, you can type in an angle, which again is totally repetitive because I have an angle field right up here. I'll just type zero again to straighten it out. So multiple ways to rotate objects. I tend to just do it manually. You know, I always just stay on the free transform. I don't even need the free transform. If I select and I'm on my black arrow, I just go outside right here and rotate it and then move it. If I need to rotate it exactly 20 degrees, I can type in the rotation field 20 degrees. Okay. I usually just keep it on the center reference point. So now I can rotate that back to zero and straighten it out. You have so much flexibility in designing the content on your composition. So keep those things in mind.